Happy Wednesday, traders. This is Shlomo Cooper, and we are with another Wall Street preview ahead of the opening bell. Business as usual in Wall Street. Another day, another gain, another high. The market was able to build on the strength of the first day of the month earlier this week. I talked about the strength, the tendency of the first day of the month to be strong and continued higher. The Dow Jones posted a five-day winning streak. Now, I think this rally is probably going to extend itself. Tax reform is still in the air and that is helping keep a flow on stocks. If we have a positive week, that could set the tone for what we could see the rest of the year. The indexes this year are nothing less than an all-time highs printer. Get that. Yesterday was the 44th all-time high set this year for the Dow Jones. Back in November, if you recall, most of the known investment houses were on the race to declare how much the stock market is going to plunge should the unimaginable scenario turn out to be and Donald Trump will win the presidency race. Berkeley's gave their assessment of a 10% decline. Wells Fargo came out with a gloomy future of 13% plunge. Guess what? Not only the assumptions of the financial firms of who is going to celebrate victory were totally wrong, they were also wrong on the outcome of the unimaginable scenario of Donald Trump in the White House and its effect on the stock market. From the November election that saw Donald Trump elected president to Tuesday's close, the Dow Jones gained 22%. The S&P rose about 18% and the Nasdaq surged 25%. But what was really on fire lately is the small caps space. This is near vertical rise in small cap stocks, which actually spent the back of the day yesterday trading in negative territory before rallying into the closing bell. So... Sentiment remains white hot, valuations are extended, seasonal headwinds don't seem to matter, and investors seem determined to remain convinced tax reform is a slam dunk deal. Strong markets stay sticky to the upside, my traders are hearing me say that a lot. You should not expect that a strong market is just going to suddenly collapse, suddenly fall apart. A change in direction tends to develop slowly when there is a, as such momentum as we have now. Tattoo this phrase on the back of your hand if you need, and you will know all you need to know about trading this market. The trend is your friend. Okay, statistics of the day. I love numbers. I just love statistics. Many times it just give you up front at one glance all you need to know about reality without telling all sort of stories around. This is just black numbers on a white piece of paper. Now, Mark Twain was um, the one who said that if history does not repeat itself, it often rhymes. And this is exactly how, how I refer to statistics in the market and market seasonality. Now, today I want to share with you something that I've already shared um, at the beginning of this week with my traders in our Investors Club. What are the best and worst stocks from a statistics point of view heading into the Q4 of the year? So, this table lists the 15 best and worst performing S&P 500 stocks during Q4 over the last 10 years. Four stocks in the S&P 500 have seen median gains of more than 20%, while another 62 have been up over 10%. So definitely Q4 has a very strong bias to go upwards. Q4 has been exceptionally strong for airline stocks. As you can see here, ALK, Alaska Air, Delta Airlines, DAL, and United Continental, UAL, also Southwest, LUV, are all among the top 15 performing stocks. Now, ALK is the only stock in the S&P 500 that has been public for 10 years and has been up in Q4 in each of the last 10 years. We have here statistics going all the way back to 2007. 
just take a look on ALK, so 100% uh, positive, so it's black or green all the way back to 2007. Last, um, in 2016, Q4 actually gave huge gains of more than 37% for ALK, going back to 2014. LK went up 37% and in 2013 it popped up 17%. On average it's up 25, almost 26%. This is great numbers that I love to see. So many of my investors just loaded up on the airlines in expectations for a great Q4 for them. And just look what happened yesterday in that space. DAL Delta Airlines up 6.6%. Let's go to ALK, which went up more than 4%, and United Continental, UAL, you know, it was just one-way ticket up. UAL popped more than 6%, finishing the day on a very strong note. What a great start for this quarter. All right, let's take a quick look on a couple of big movers after the closing bell yesterday that are going to be on our screens today. There are, first of all, a few earnings reports Wednesday morning, including PepsiCo, PEP, and Monsanto, MON. So, of course, I'm going to put, to put MON and PEP on my screens early in the going. MYL Mylan got an approval for its version for a new treatment that is competing again, the blockbuster medicine of Teva, the Copexon. I expect to see movement on those both symbols, M, Y, L, and Teva today. So they are going to be on my screen with, I, I, have, a, I have a tendency, I have a bias of going long M, Y, L, and shorting Teva. Let's just see how things are going to fold out. Thank you all for watching. Have a great trading day and I'll see you in our next video. Bye bye.